Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra 2 Unit 3 Final Exam Review Video Number 2. All right, let's go ahead and flip this bad boy over. Rip it off like a band-aid. Let's get it over with. All right. So, determine the solutions to the following system of equations. Now, first thing I notice about that f of x is that, yes, there's an absolute value. So the negative is telling me that it's reflected. Negative, and it's negative 1, so I have to go down 1 over 1. And then my vertex, I take the opposite of negative 3, opposite of that negative 3, and the other 3 stays the same. Okay? So at 3, 3 is where I start. I'm going down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. And I'm doing this in both directions as many times as possible. Okay? And then when I'm done, I'm going to draw a straight line using my straight edge, not using my calculator or anything else, my shoe. Straight edge. Okay. Now let's look at that second one. G of x equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So it's negative 1 half. That means I'm going down 1 over 2. We'll make that look more like a 2. All right, and then my y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay, so at 0, 3 is where I start, and I go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. All right, and I'm just going to go a couple in the opposite direction, and then I find that there are two points of intersection. And this is why it's super, super, super important that we are using straight edges. So we can see what those two points are. One, two. So our first point is two, two. And then our second point is six, zero. So those are the two things that we need to write down over here. All right, number eight. Which ordered pair is not a solution when graphed? All right, my favorite. Yes, once again, when I did this, I did it too fast and I got a couple wrong. Don't do the same thing. Don't be like Mr. Grice. All right, so our first absolute value inequality, it's going to be open, and it's going to be below, and then it's being reflected because it's negative, and that's telling us that we have to go down 2 over 1, and then my vertex is 4, 3. Okay, so let's do all that. At 4, 3, I am open, and I have to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and I'm doing this in both directions. Okay, and then we're drawing a dashed line. And I have to shade below this, correct? So I'm just going to write myself a little note right here that I have to shade below. Below. All right, let's look at that second inequality. This one's linear. Now, this one's going to be closed, and it's a 
above because it's the greater than or equal to my slope is 3 over 4, which is up 3 over 4, and then I'm starting at 0, negative 5. Okay, so it's 0, negative 5 is where I start. I go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, oh, can't go that way. 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, and let's graph it using our straight edge, not our shoe. And I said that we have to be, or I didn't say, but the inequality symbol said we had to be above. Okay, so we look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to be below the red. So um, 1 is not below. 5 is not below, 4 is below, 2 is below, and 3 is above. But I have to be above the blue line, so I get rid of 4, and then 2 is what we shade. Okay, so it's just this little section right here. So we have to check all of these points to see which ones are not a solution. So, eighty. Four negative one. Four negative one is a solution. So I have to cross it off. I don't know if you also want to write down the letters. So there's a. B. Four. Negative two. Well, once again, four negative two. That's B right there. That is a solution. All right. Four zero. Oh, well, there's C. That is a solution. D. Four, one, two, three. Ooh. What do you think about D? Well, that's in an open point, and um, no, that's not a solution. So D is our answer. Last one. Last one, but there are like 50 questions. Use the graph uh, g of x to answer questions 9 through 14. So determine the domain. Remember that domain are your x values. We're looking for any breaks in the graph from left to right. And there are none. So that means our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now our range, our range is our y values. And our y values go up and down. Now, I can't be down here. Our graph doesn't go down here at all. But it does go up starting at negative 5. Okay? So starting at negative 5, our graph goes up to positive infinity. So, which side of the graph is decreasing? Is it the right side or the left side? Well, the one that's going down, yeah, the side that's going down is the left side. And it starts going down all the way at negative infinity but then it stops going down right here, and that is at the number negative 3. Okay, so that means the side that is increasing is our right side. And it starts increasing at negative 3, and it keeps going to positive infinity. Number 13, find the average rate of change. Remember, average rate of change, those are fancy words for slope, over the domain values. Remember, domain, those are the x values 
look at we're going to do both of those at the same time uh, negative 5 negative 3 okay so I'm going to kind of erase all this stuff oh don't make a bigger mess so let's do negative 5 so at negative 5 there's my point at negative 3 there's my point so what's going on well to get from point to point I have to go down 3 over 2. So can I reduce negative 3 over 2? Um, the correct answer to that is no. So we would say negative 3 over 2. Okay, now we're going to look at 1 and 3. Okay, so I'm going to find 1, which is right here. Go to 3, find my point, and then we're going to do the same thing. This time, I'm going up 3 over 2. So now it's a positive 3 over 2. And that's it. So it's not asking us where is it greater than 0 for the range or less than 0. So Thankfully, we don't have to worry about it for this problem. Okay, so this is Mr. Grice signing off for Algebra 2, Unit 3, Final Exam Review. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Kranz or myself, because we would love to help you out. This is Mr. Grice signing off. Thanks for watching.